Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video we are going to explore an example in which we are asked to determine the planned dimensions of the square spread footing that is supporting a 100 kip, that's 100,000 pounds, column force if the soil has an allowable bearing capacity of 3,000 PSF, and if you remember, uh, PSF means pounds per square foot. So if we look at the figure that we're given here, all of this is given information, we have the soil surface here, and embedded into the soil, we have what looks like a profile or possibly section view of a spread footing. And we see that the column is coming out of, this, of the ground surface and it's supporting 100 kips, which is 100,000 pounds. Now, what we're being asked to determine is to um, find the plan dimensions. So um, what are the plan dimensions? Well, that's the dimensions of the square spread footing if you're looking down on it. So the first thing I would do under solution is I would go ahead and draw a plan view of this square spread footing. And I do that because um, it's best to be able to visualize these kinds of problems before we really jump in and try to do all the calculations. So I'm gonna draw a plan view here. I'm gonna write off to the side, not to scale. So you know, if you, if you um, are writing this on a piece of paper, which I, I hope you are, you need to be writing all this down to best learn it, um, you can actually pause the video and draw it to scale and actually make these dimension lines uh, look like they mean something. So again, a plan view is looking down from the top at this footing. So we have this column here um, that has the load coming in uh, on the top. And we were told in the problem statement that it's a square spread footing, okay? Which means in plan view, the two dimensions are gonna be equal to one another. So if I call this dimension line B, that means that the perpendicular dimension line right here is also going to be the same magnitude B, okay? Because again, it's a square spread footing in plan view, looking down on it, okay? So um, knowing that it's a square spread footing, we should know that the way we calculate the area, the plan area of a square is just going to be B squared, Okay, now if you remember the video before this, you watch the background information, hopefully on this topic, we know that Q allowable should be bigger than or equal to the applied bearing pressure sigma. Okay, now we know that the applied bearing pressure sigma comes from the column force divided by the area. So if you again recall from the end of the previous video, we can set up the relationship Q allowable must be bigger than or equal to, oops, didn't mean to bring that up, F call over A. And then of course, we'll put a comma here, we can solve for A and we can say A is bigger than or equal to F call over Q allow, okay? So we had this much uh, little algebraic rearranging in our previous video. Well now, if we know that the footing we're interested in is square and we know that the area is equal to B squared, what can we do? Well, instead of A here, we can substitute in B squared for A. So coming, coming down over here, we can now say B squared must be greater than or equal to F call over Q allow. And then what we really want is B. So we can take the square root of both sides and take the positive of that of those roots. Because if you remember from math, when you take a square root, you typically um, introduce a positive and a negative root if you're dealing with real numbers. So we're just gonna be interested in the positive root. So we're gonna say B must be bigger than or equal to the square root of F column divided by Q allow. So now for this, this problem, we've kind of uh, determined this handy dandy little formula here, okay? So we have these values, right? We have F call and we have Q allow. So let's substitute that in. 
Um, we know that F call was 100 kips, right? So we can say B is bigger than or equal to the square root of 100 kips divided by, now Q allow was given as 3000 PSI. So should we write, I'm sorry, PSF. So should we write 3000 PSF here? Think about it. The answer is actually no because your units must be consistent, okay? So you should not put the 3000 here. You should convert the 3000 PSF to 3 KSF, kips per square foot, because you're dealing with a column load of kips here. Another way of handling it, you could keep the 3000 PSF, but do what? convert the column force to 100,000 pounds. So be consistent with your units. We'll make a little note here. Make sure you are unit consistent, okay? That's very important, otherwise you will get the wrong answer. So we can um, punch this through in our calculators. I'm using my fantastic TI-36X Pro calculator. So um, we uh, evaluate this. You need to punch this through with me to make sure you know where these values are coming from. But I get B must be bigger than or equal to 5.77 feet, okay? Now, if you're wondering how did these units work out, how did we end up concluding that this has units of feet? Well, we know B is a dimension line um, that's a length, so we know it should be feet. But how can we get feet out of, out of this square root term? Well, let's do a little um, unit, unit analysis here just to make sure we understand. We have kips divided by KSF. Well, KSF is kips per square foot, okay? And all of that is wrapped up inside of a square root. So if you look at this unit analysis, how does this uh, kind of manipulate itself? Well, you end up with kips multiplied by feet squared over kips, right? Because when you have a fraction in the denominator of another fraction, you multiply the numerator of the big fraction, which in this case is kips, and this is the same kips here, okay? This kips and this kips are the same, okay? You multiply the numerator by the reciprocal of the denominator, okay? So reciprocal means one over. So the reciprocal of kips over square feet is square feet over kips. And you can see that the kips units cancel and you're left with square feet but that's inside of a square root. And so when you take the square root of square feet, you're just left with feet. And that's what we should expect here for the units of length. So you can show all of your unit manipulations mathematically um, as well. So, um, so now here's what I would suggest. As a practicing engineer, you don't want to go tell the contractor or the construction worker uh, to pour a footing uh, concrete footing in the ground that is measuring 5.77 feet by 5.77 feet. They're going to look at you like you don't know what you're talking about because no one wants to measure 0.77 feet on a construction site. What you need to do is you need to take this dimension size and you need to round it up to a practical, reasonable number that is constructible and easily measurable by your field technician, your foreman, your construction worker, whoever's taking care of the construction on the site. So let me ask you a question, pause the video so you can think about it. What would you round this to? What would you round this to? Okay, so I'm gonna tell you the answer. I would round this to six feet, so I'm gonna say, round B to six feet. So what you're doing is you're saying by this inequality, B must be bigger than or equal to 5.77 feet. So it can be bigger. If, if it's bigger than 5.77 feet, it'll be a little stronger than what you need it to be, okay? So I would make it a nice 
um, reasonable number. Six feet is a great number to use. So I'm gonna say use B equals six feet, okay? Now, what would that give you for your area? That would give you area as B squared, which is 36 feet. And then you can confirm, confirm the bearing by saying that your applied bearing pressure would then become F call over area that you, that you um, are using here, okay? Um, so if F call is still 100 kips divided by 36 square feet, then, uh, I'm sorry, um, yeah, 36 square feet, I forgot my, just went on that long tangent about how important units are and I almost forgot something with units. <laughs> uh, area is 36 square feet. And so when you say 100 kips divided by 36 square feet, you end up getting 2.78 KSF. And you wanna check that uh, your Q allowable, which was given to you as 3000 PSF, or three KSF is bigger than sigma, which is equal to 2.78 KSF. So you're in good shape. That, that's a confirmation that your applied bearing pressure when you have rounded up your B value to six feet has now been driven less than the allowable bearing capacity of the soil, which is what you want. You want your applied bearing pressure to be less than your allowable bearing capacity of the soil. Otherwise, if your applied bearing pressure is bigger than your, um, than your allowable bearing capacity, the soil is gonna fail. You don't want the soil to fail, right? You want the allowable bearing capacity of the soil to be bigger than your applied bearing pressure. So we have that. So if we wanted to draw a, um, a nice three-dimensional figure of this, we can sketch this out. And if you check out one of the previous videos on this topic, you'll see another 3D figure of this as well if that will help you visualize things. So we have this three-dimensional figure here. Let me uh, make that a little nicer. We have some hidden lines here, okay? And our dimension lines are going to be six feet by what now? Six feet. So that's a six foot by six foot square spread footing. Here is where the column is. And here is that uh, force here, 100 kips coming in um, to, to that footing. And then of course, if we wanted to sketch on there the bearing pressure distribution, which is a uniform bearing pressure, we're gonna have something like this. And what is this uniform bearing pressure? Well, it's gonna be sigma equals 2.78 KSF, um, which is again, uh, this is less than, this is less than Q allowable, which was three KSF. So this is a nice comprehensive three-dimensional uh, figure. Again, not my best artwork. Those of you who have watched a lot of my other videos know I, I regularly comment about how my artwork is not fantastic. Um, but that's it. That, that concludes this, this kind of example of preliminarily sizing a square spread footing. Um, one thing I like to mention is this column is concentrically placed. So that means that the column is at the center of the square spread footing. And that is what um, enables us to, to know and, and uh, safely understand that the bearing pressure here is a uniform bearing pressure. If we did not have a concentrically placed column, if the column was off to one of these sides or another and not in the smack dab center of the footing, then we would not have this uniform bearing pressure like we do. So it's a uniform bearing pressure because of the concentrically loaded and placed column on the footing. Um, hopefully this video was helpful to you. Um, please hit like and subscribe and keep an eye out for some more videos on this topic in the future. Thanks.